I'm an alligator. Put the boys on. The boys, baby. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a new installment. Week 13 of the bulk. I am 196 pounds. Cheeks out on the scale. No clothes. Raw. 196.0 zip in the morning. My moving average, it said it was at 194.6 was my moving average on the 15th. It's the 22nd right now, and it's 195.6. We're climbing on the scale, surely but slowly. We're taking it slow. That's the best recipe, because then it's a disaster to cut, bro. But I'm gonna give you skinny guys some tips, because me, I was very fucking skinny. Skinnier than I am now. I'm still skinny, but I was skinny as fuck. I'm gonna try to guide you in the right direction of gaining muscle, some bulking tips, based off of my knowledge. I've been in the gym nine years, trial and error. Spent the first two years training chest and biceps every other day, you feel me, just like everyone else. And then I came across Tom Platts and these intense motherfuckers and I was in the gym every day. First got my first gym membership. I remember I was 145 in the morning. So I'm 196 right now. I'm leaner than when I first started. It was a weird, really skinny, but I had like chunk. Like I didn't have abs. You know how people are skinny and they have abs? Yeah. And so I just full sent a bulk. That's really what you got to do when you're skinny and you got a little chub. If you were to send the cut, you would kind of look like Skeletor. It depends where you start off. Some kids are just a little bit bigger. When they start off, they're like 160 and they gain relatively easy and they're already big to begin with. So they can afford to strip the fat first and then bulk, yeah. you feel me? But I was in the spot where I was just skinny and weak. I couldn't even bench 10 pounds on each side. I was like flailing like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you all motherfuckers gain weight because there wasn't much for me to go off of website wise. There was like bodybuilding.com and there was the OGs like John Meadows, Jeff Nippard was still around on YouTube. That's where I learned most of the stuff I know now was YouTube. Dude, I feel like I always say it every time I talk about bulking, but even if you're not hungry, you have to eat in a caloric surplus. And everybody's different. Everybody has a different surplus. You have to figure out your maintenance first. That's the amount of calories you have to eat to support your current mass to maintain your body weight every day. But we're trying to put on size. So you have to eat a little bit extra to support that size and that growth. I usually eat 200 to 300 calorie surplus every time. And then when my body stops responding and my weight slows down and I stop gaining, usually after like a week and a half, two weeks or so, I'll pay attention on whatever I'm tracking. I got an app doing it for me. It's called Happy Scale. It's no sponsor or anything, but it's just super convenient. It does the averages for you. So if it stops, then you just eat 200, 300 more calories because once you gain, that maintenance moves and you just have to keep eating more, if that makes sense. You have to keep supporting the physical mass you're building gradually. Some people think like, oh, I'm bulking. That, that means free game. Like I'm eating whatever the fuck I want, whenever I want as much as I want and just listens to their natural appetite, that shit will lead you into the gutter, bro. My natural appetite usually, the first time I ended up tracking when I thought I was eating a lot, just eat normally and then track it all and see how much you're actually eating. It's gonna tell you a lot, especially if you're not gaining the weight you want to. If you're listening to your natural appetite, chances are you're eating in a caloric deficit. You're just not eating enough to put on size. I was always training my ass off, harder than anyone in the gym, I swore on it. And then I wasn't growing. And I was like, fuck dude, I feel like I'm eating a lot. But then I went and tracked it and I was like, oh dude, like I'm only eating 2,500 calories. I need to be eating 3,000 calories to gain size. You don't know until you actually know. But we got legs today again, so. PR time, baby! <laughs> I was just so surprised because most orange flavors taste like fucking dookie. This one actually tastes like a little orange bev. All right, same deal, hamstrings first. Just because you can hammer your hamstrings before and still not get affected with like leg presses and squats and such. If anything, you're in a better position. You get a little cushion in for the pushing and with the pump in your hammies. 
Let me get a little warm up before. The Fall Flex, this gym's doing their own bodybuilding show and they're asking me to be a judge for it. They're getting a, a bunch of other judges too, but they asked me to be one of the judges and I was like, fuck yeah. I mean, I've been looking at dudes and thongs for what, nine years now? <laughs> Pause. Pause if you want. <laughs> All oiled up on stage, fucking yeah. flexing their glutes. I saw old bodybuilders talking about it too, how they would purposefully fuck up their legs before they did a compound movement, so they did less, so their bodies think that they're doing more, essentially. I don't know the evidence to support that. I usually like to go off evidence, in fact, but it seems to make sense, right? Like, when I get in the Smith machine, I could probably go ham and powerlifting style four plates for fucking reps and shit and, like, go heavy, but I'm going down with, like, no momentum, and I already had done leg press, and hamstring curls prior so i'm already fucked up so i have to do less weight but so i did full stack for eight reps i'm gonna try to get nine and ten before i move up you gotta treat every set like your mother's life depends on it and then if you don't pr you at least know you gave it your all you feel me oh let's do quiet i was do quiet oh let's do quiet i was do quiet oh let's do quiet i was do it with the disco flip quiet I was running lying hamstring curls for the longest time, but I low-key prefer seated. You can be restricted in it and really dig and isolate that hamstring. I get the nastiest hamstring pumps from the seated. You can be locked in and just only be moving this. Lying hamstring is good for training mind muscle connection if you really lack that in your hamstrings. If you master lying hamstring curls and then move to seated hamstring curls and really just get that full stretch and really squeeze it at the bottom, you're gonna fuck up your hamstrings. Here we go. I'm still gonna do like a warm up rep with my working weight. I've been liking that. I've been testing on everything. It just makes me used to the weight, so I'm less shaky, especially with compound movements. Like I'll do a essentially a heavy single with whatever working weight I'm doing on hack squat, leg press, whatever, just to make sure my body's primed and ready to handle that weight so I'm not shaking like a leaf when I'm fucking moving it. I said so it's like two warm ups, and then you have one that's like a one one set with your working weight, and yeah. then your working set. So it's like half the working weight, 10 reps, and then like a moderate, like four to six reps with like a moderate weight and then I like to do like one or two reps with my working weight just to prime myself assuming you're hitting like six to ten reps that's what I usually do with like my working weight it always just feels better nice he's about to kill them oh no oh. are you guys doing legs with that Ass. 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 That's crazy. Holy shit. That's gonna hurt to poop. Uh, I hit 11 and some change the partials. Hey, it's a little spicy, but I can still squat on them I'm feeling good. All right, we're gonna move into leg press. That was a success That was up three reps and I kept the same cues I'm doing three second eccentric and like one and a half on the way up when I'm moving the weight It's just all muscle no momentum. Go. Uh, you ready for this? No, we're gonna bring you up. Okay. Watch the facial expressions. <laughs> yep. yeah, you'll, you'll, oh, yeah, that's America's ass. <laughs> Holy motherfuck. <laughs> All right, so I hit 10 reps with 455 or four plates per side in 25, so I'm going to move up. I'm probably going to put 10s on each side. With the bulking tips, man, people talk about a lot of nutrition being the most important part, but, I mean, if you don't stimulate the muscle, there's going to be no reason for it to adapt or even grow. Indeed. If you just sit there and eat, you're going to become fat. 
I don't think there's like percentages to it. I think it's just they support each other. Everything has its part, you feel me? It's like you can't just go to the gym and not eat. You're going to constantly be sore and you're just going to be weak and frail and like a string noodle. But if you train harder than eating surplus, you're going to gain some muscle. And then vice versa, if you just eat a shit ton, you sit on your ass and play the League of Legends all day, you're going to become fat. <laughs> I'm about to get like 10 in this bitch, bro. <laughs> Bro, another major tip I slept on, at least when I first started getting started, was tracking my progress. If you're not getting stronger, especially on paper with the program, you're 100% not getting bigger. There's like bread and butter movements that you stick to over and over again that just feel amazing. You get awesome stimulus with those. Stick to those, keep doing them, get great at them, perfect form, and get strong as fuck at them. You might not be as strong as the person next to you, but I'm way stronger than the motherfucker when I first started. Way stronger than my 145 pound self, a thousand percent. You can see it. I may not bench 405 or whatever, but I've progressed a lot from the 10 pounds on each side benching. I at least got like 335, I think, was my best bench. That's a lot of progress. It's all up to you. It's you versus you, not you versus anyone. Don't compare it because at the end of the day, you got to get stronger to get the bigger muscle. So. Like, probably like two reps, honestly, and then one rep of my working weight. Not too many. I slept good, ate good, did my morning mantra, sweet blunt before the legs. Everything's been good. And I'll put the freaking hole in your head. We got bitch ass calves, if they even grow. We're just doing the deed and crossing our fingers. Time for calves. I'm just focusing on getting stronger with these. I'm keeping the same consistent form, getting deep, like I said last leg day, just in the hole, feeling it, and then moving up with only your calf. Two plates in 25 last week. I hit it for nine. I'm gonna try to improve from that. I feel like I'm gonna end up hitting like 11. We shall see. And just keep the form clean, hope for the best from there. Just push as hard as I can, baby. Flash 
it's a must Cause I'm back from the dead Everlast coming back from the dead I hate 11. I fucking called it. Woo. Credentials. Can't take that. Don't get on there. Don't give me some cows. Dude, my dad. Have you seen my dad's calves? Yeah, they're wild. I'm just trying to tap in. I gotta lock in my genetics. They're there. I just haven't been using them. We got abs now. up like two reps. Sculpted static abs, here we come. That was a fucking successful leg workout. I know that because I'm dead as shit. We're almost at the crib so I can drink my shake. I'm gonna show you guys the recipe for the 1300, yes, you heard right, calorie shake recipe that got me through my first couple bulks, especially during high school. I was slamming that bitch in the mornings and then go to school. I would eat a school lunch. I would pack a sleeve of bagels and I'd eat in my last period, then I'd go home and eat again. And then I usually worked at a food place and I would devour in whatever food was there. I was just definitely in the surplus, but the shake made it a shit ton easier because us skinny guys got some pretty quick metabolisms and you need some quick fixes for that problem. And I mean, the shake tastes amazing. It's not like I make some dog shit shake just to get calories down. Already. Ladies and gentlemen, bestow your eyes on the ingredients for the mass gainer shake. This is homemade. This ain't no gimmick bullshit. I tracked it and it was 1,379 calories. So it's even more than I thought. To make this recipe, I mean, I normally have just plain Quaker oats, but I'm working with what I got, okay? So normally plain oats, I rock with like 100 or so grams. If not, you can throw a couple packets in there, two, three, same deal. I mean, this is gonna make it taste better, probably. Next, peanut butter. I like going with the organic peanut butter. I just think it tastes better. And if you a Jif type of dude, Skippy, it don't matter. Peanut butter is peanut butter, you feel me? Two servings, baby. Whole milk. If you're trying to bulk, baby, you need to switch to whole milk. You're gonna get more calories for your buck. I rock with 20 OZs in the shake, okay? This is the base foundation. Get yourself some fine honey. Light amber mountain forest US grade A honey. It don't fucking matter. Two servings, honey. Boom, that's about 140 calories. Bananas, okay? Do you care if your bananas have the brown shits on them? Mm. It don't matter. It's getting blended up anyways. It'll taste good regardless. 1,379 calories, okay? We're throwing it in the Ninja blender. Greg Gusev would be proud. That shit blends up anything you put in there. Damn. 184 grams of carbs, 47 grams of fat, 65 grams of protein. And yeah, and then it makes it way easier to hit your calorie goals, cause boom, checked off about 1400 calories. You just gotta fill in the rest with like what? Two, three meals and you're chilling. Especially if you time it right, I would drink 
some of it in the morning, like I said, and then you could drink maybe the rest of it after your workout. That would probably be nice. Refuel your muscles right away with all the carbs. Choose what you will. I'm gonna blend this bitch up and show you the result. Let me taste, because I used to put blueberries. I put honey because I didn't have blueberries on deck. Bruh, literally taste it. Let, let me document. No fake reactions. Give it to me on true, and I don't care, I can take it. I should yummy as hell. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Motherfucker, and it's getting you real big. Yeah, to rank up. But yeah, boom. You can pack that shit in two different blender bottles. Kill one. Kill one fucking before bed. Whenever it's convenient to you. 1,400 calories. That should help y'all uh, skinny dudes put on some size. People ask for the best bulking foods. The best bulking foods are just the ones that are the highest in calories. The most calorie dense foods. Peanut butter, boom, put that in my shake. Milk, super high in calories, especially whole milk. Uh, avocados, you can add avocados to like your beef and rice meals. One avocado is like 240 a pop. Eggs, like yolk and everything. No egg white shit, you're gonna get the fats. I mean, it's nature's multivitamin. You're gonna feel great if you eat eggs every day. Fattier red meats are good too. So instead of getting 93.7 beef, you can rock with 85.15. It'll be higher in calories because fats are higher in calories. So you can do that. I usually stay away from like chicken breast just because it's so low in calories and like the fish. Maybe on a prep or maybe like when I'm cutting. I usually even then still choose beef just because I like red meat. It's really easy to add calories with rice too. Like one of those rice bowls, 310 a pop. I could eat this in like three bites. Boom, two of them bitches, 620 calories. Add some fatty red meat. You got a meal that's pushing a thousand calories. Add some avocado, you got over a thousand calories. Add some orange juice. I like drinking orange juice. I drink orange juice like a couple times a day. That shit adds up. You can even cook the beef with butter if you prefer. Just make sure you get good, clean butter or like avocado oil. Oil is calories. That's pretty much what I'm rocking with. That shit tasty, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking. Monkey Bass Gainer. Mm. Trade market. Macros. The boom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some good shit. Mm -hmm. I feel it. Yeah, you're the baddest bitch of them all. <laughs> all right, get out. We're smoking. I think I talked about it in the car in the beginning. Bulking does not equal eat whatever the fuck you want. I heard Menser in a phone call or something. I saw a YouTube short of it. It's along the same lines of what happens when you drink too much water? You piss. What happens when you eat too much food than you need to? You just gain fat, unnecessary fat. I used to think eat big, get big without tracking so much as I would be in like a thousand calorie surplus thinking like more was better. That's why I like to keep it 200 to 300 above it. You make sure you're in a surplus, but you're not overeating to the point where you're going to store a bunch of extra unnecessary body fat because that makes the cut brutal, bro. After my dirty bulk, it took months to get to a relatively lean body fat percentage it just makes it longer if i were to put months on it six to eight months depending on where your body composition goes i would say keep it under 20 percent body fat at least you can kind of eyeball that you get to know kind of what the percentages look like you can of course do measurements and be like a nerd about it but you don't want to get too chunky and then i'll do a pullback however long that takes to get to where i want to go it just, it won't take as long because I know I took it slow with the calories. You feel me? The slower you take it, the longer you can stay in a calorie surplus because you just want to monitor the body fat levels. The body fat levels are the only thing that tells me when I need to cut. Bro, other than that, I think the biggest tip for myself was eating fast. If you eat fast enough, you can eat a lot of food before your body realizes it's full. Don't be afraid to shovel down that food. Just make sure you're chewing it so you can digest it well. Walking helps too. I've noticed my metabolism fires a little better and I'm hungrier when I go on little walks after I eat. And you feel better because it decreases insulin sensitivity by 30%. Stan Efferding was talking about if you walk three times for 10 minutes, that it's the equivalent of what? I think he said running 10 marathons in a year. It's the equivalent. If you do it every single day, so it's so good for you. It helps with posture. It's helped with my lower back because I had a pretty bad lower back injury in football, but that helps kind of correct it. It's always good to stay a little more active. It's kind of like a fast pace. like. 
you get your heart pumping a little. If not that, it's always good to implement cardio. It speeds up your metabolism, and it's really good to keep up with your heart health. I mean, heart is the most important muscle in the body. Sleep seven to eight hours just to maximize gains. Don't fucking do what Drew's doing. Drew's an artist. Don't copy him. Sleep seven to eight hours. I used to sleep like three to four when I was going to high school. I just thought like sleep was for the week and I can rest when I'm dead, but sleep equals muscle growth. It directly supports it and it's just good for your overall health and it's good for your metabolism. I noticed a lot less injuries too when I slept more. It's just, it's just a better time. Make sure you're drinking enough water. I like to get at least a gallon. If you gotta carry on a gallon jug, uh, just to make sure you're getting a gallon, do that. That always helps. Make sure you're getting electrolytes too. You can throw in, uh, I like Element. I don't have a sponsor or anything, but it's just little sugar-free electrolyte packets. Hydrated muscle means better contraction and a stronger muscle and a fuller muscle. So you'll look better too if you drink more water. That's gonna be a wrap for the bulking tips and the vlog for this week. I'll see y'all motherfuckers next Sunday. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for using code monkey, especially Black Friday. I know everyone's posting Black Friday, but if you fuck with me, I appreciate you. Thank you for supporting me. We're gonna make sure that goes directly to nerdy camera equipment and making the video sicker, okay? Appreciate y'all. Make sure to slap that like button in the ass for me. And until next time, peace out, baby. He said there ain't no rest for the wicked. Money don't grow on trees. I got bills to pay. I got mouths to feed. There ain't nothing in this world for free. Oh, no, I can't slow down. I can't hold back. Oh, you know, I wish I could. Oh, no, there ain't no rest for the wicked. Until we close our eyes.